10 of From the Press Box, Stark County Edition on FridayNightOhio.com. I'm Chris Bevan. I'm Chris Easterlin. Big week, obviously, with the rivalries, and we can break down some big games. Primarily, uh, McKinley and Maslin is the one that's going to jump out to most people, even though, uh, in the case of McKinley, not quite having the season the, the Bulldogs thought they would have, but Maslin's had a big year. Absolutely, and, and you know Maslin just would love to, to cap off the regular season, seal up a home game for the playoffs by uh, by extending their, their win streak to five games over their, their arch rivals. And, and certainly uh, they have the team that's capable of doing it, uh, a passing offense which, uh, which has been explosive throughout the season with uh, Partridge at the uh, at quarterback, receivers like Devin Smith, Justin Olak, Bo Grunder. Uh, their offense seems to have gotten back on track the last couple of weeks after against Warren and Minner, so uh, see if they can keep it going against a McKinley team that, that struggled a bit in stopping, uh, in stopping the pass against some, some pretty good teams like uh, Wayne, Jackson, and, and Fitch. Well, the, the quarterback that really jumps out at me when you talk about Partridge would be the, the kid from Fitch that they saw, John Ballard. Ballard uh, hurt him both running the ball and passing the ball. Partridge can do that type of stuff. He's got, what, eight touchdown passes the last two weeks, and McKinley's given up a number of big plays primarily in the passing game. But on the other side of the ball, I think what gives the Bulldogs a lot of optimism is they can run the ball on just about anybody with uh, Bryce Wilder and uh, Elijah Farrakhan, and they've... Uh, you know, they know that Maslin's had some trouble defending the run. Absolutely. Uh, Maslin gave up another 100-yard rusher last week to Mike Carez of uh, Minner. The week before that, it was, it was DeMond Himes out of, for Warren, who wasn't real. I mean, that's not a running football team, Warren. It's not the traditional, you know, Maurice Claret, uh, that type of running football team. So uh, for, for Warren to be able to do that, if I'm McKinley, I'm looking at that tape and saying, hey, we can run the ball. If we stick to it, just run right at Maslin. I, sometimes you get you know, tr trying to run sideline to sideline with Maslin, Maslin can slow you down. But if you run right at Maslin's defense, you can, teams have had some success against them. And then the other wild card always in this rivalry is just the emotion and, and the intangibles. McKinley this year has not won two in a row all season. It's been win one, lose one, win one, lose one. They haven't lost two in a row, obviously, either. So this is the week they've been losing games. It'll be interesting to see if they can finally kind of sustain some momentum. And obviously, Maslin, like you s said, the, the Tigers have that win streak to go. To, to protect, which can be a hard thing to do in this series when you've won several in a row. The, the law of averages start to catch up with you. I, I think this is a game by the middle of the second quarter, you'll have a good idea which way it's going to go. I think if it's going to be McKinley's day to, to, to either win it or lose close, you're going to know. If, Mas if Maslin's up, it's going to run away with this game. You're going to know in first quarter, middle of second quarter, because I, they're the type of offense, I don't think it's going to be a steady you know, pull away. It's going to be get out and, and, and run them off the field right from the start. And while we're talking about rivalries, obviously there's a lot of them in Week 10. Louisville Minerva is another one that's jumping out in the NBC. Leopard's looking to, to finish off a 10-0 season. Minerva's had a great year. They haven't beaten Louisville in a while. So obviously the Lions uh, will have a lot of motivation going into this one. Absolutely. I mean, Minerva's uh, hurting a little bit. They've, they've lost a couple of games uh, by lopsided score. And it looks like Louisville is really... Uh, you know, showing no ill effects to the loss of, of Bobby Swigert about uh, five weeks ago. I mean, they they really just haven't met a, missed a beat. They they've kept on rolling along, and I would be surprised. As good as the season Minerva's had, I really would be surprised at this if uh, if Louisville doesn't close out the the perfect season. Louisville usually wins the games it's supposed to win. Other rivalry games, you have Aquinas and Central Catholic. Each have had tough years. They're looking to get things going, and then in the Federal League, you have the Glen Oak Perry and Hoover Jackson Week Ten games. Hoover and Glen Oak, big-time favorites in those games, uh, looking to secure playoff positions. Not going to get a lot of points from these wins, but they need these wins if they want to maybe sneak out home games. I think Glen Oak, more so than, than Hoover, will have a chance to get some, some wins. Perry has, I think, uh, three or four wins so far this year. So that will give them some level two points that, that could possibly bump them into the top, uh, top four. As for Hoover... They just got to win, you know, get themselves right after the, the tough loss last week. I think, you know, you, you do like you do every week. You establish Eric Coward. You know, Jackson couldn't stop Caleb Laps last week from Perry. I, I don't think they can stop Eric Howard from, uh, from Hoover, obviously. Probably going to be Eric Howard's final home game, so I'm sure he's going to want to go out in style. That's been a look at Week 10. We'll be back next week to look at the first round of the playoffs. For FridayNightOhio.com, I'm Chris Bevan. And I'm Chris Easterling.